All right. So let's start. Today's topic is about sync marks. It's about how to predict and minimize the sync marks value in our plastic part design. So uh, the agenda is uh, first we'll talk about how actually a sync mark will form, and then we'll discuss about how to predict a sync mark in solid plastic including a general workflow, as well as the design rules for the ribs and fillets. And then we analyze the problem, what is the cause of the sink mark, and what factor we can be adjust to improve them. And finally, I'll show you another case of minimize sink mark in SOLIDWORKS, before and after, right? And the Q&A section. Although I put the Q&A at the last, but at any time, you can raise your question in the chat. Okay, perhaps you can see a small hand over there. You also can uh, click the hand button to raise my concern if necessary. Right. So, uh, how a SIMMAC develop? Right. How actually it develops? Sink marks are actually everywhere. It's quite a common defect. We can always see uh, usually from the behind of ribs or boss. Right? Here is a pretty uh, serious sink mark over here. And here is a behind of rib. You can see um, some something is sinking bottom. The wall is not so nice. Surely the appearance is not up to standard. Right. So what's the basic mechanism that sink mark develop? A sink mark comes from shrinkage. The plastic volume will change depends on the temperature. For example, when it is heated up, it has a larger volume. And when it cools down, it will be shrink. So a plastic heat up in a barrel okay, could be uh, a few percent or even 10 percent larger than the one after cooling our final product. Okay. So between this uh, cooling and heating process, okay, imagine when we inject something inside into the mold, some plastic resin inside, melt plastic resin. At the wall side, because of the cavity temperature is very low. So if very fast it will be cooled down and form a solid, a shell around it. You can see from this diagram. Darker region, that is the cooled shell, solidified shell. In the between, because of uh, we are still injecting or we are still packing, it is, it is still hot and it is still liquid. The flow just keep flowing. So this, these are the all new flow coming in. So it's hot over here. So solid and liquid, right? So when we, when we cool down further, what actually will happen is this thing already solid. This thing is liquid and after filling and packing, the liquid, the hot liquid, when they cool down, they tend to string up. They pull inside the wall so that the wall will sink down. Okay, this part, the lighter part, they will have a smaller value. Therefore, they form a fillet. So the problem is too high internal stress. The thick area pull the wall away okay, and form a sinkhole. Okay. In other words, we can say that the wall maybe is not rigid enough, not hard enough to resist the internal stress. Right? So therefore, the solution is quite straightforward. I mean, in theory's way, it's quite straightforward. You just reduce the internal stress or increase the wall rigid the wall, the wall uh, toughness. Right? 
So in manufacturing process or plastic design, there are a lot of factors that could affect these two things. Okay, like uh, flow rate, material, cavity pressure, a lot of things. No, but the, the root cause is these two, uh, internal stress and surface rigidity. Right. So let's see how many ways we can uh, predict a sink mux. Okay, basically, two ways. First way is uh, prototyping. We make a mold, we have a design, we create a test mold, and we inject it, test a few parameters, and then we check whether it is good or not. So it becomes, it is a check of both things, including whether we have designed better or our operation condition is set correctly. So two tests into one test, real prototype test. The other way is to predict it inside uh, simulation software. Okay. This is more to um, reducing the prototyping. Right? So the difference is uh, time and cost consumed. But either will do the tricks. Right? Let's see how we do it in uh, SOLIDWORKS. So, for example, we have a uh, right. For example, we have uh, this is a power tube, a casing over here. So this is a, a design, right? So we can see a lot of ribs, okay? bolts, screw holes. So to begin with an analysis, what we do is Meshing. Right. So we put a little bit of meshing over here. Mesh. All right, probably I can see from the audio views, they are a little bit lacking in my visual. So probably the network speed is a little bit uh, congest today. So anyway, I will do it slowly and try to mesh my voice and my uh, my screen. All right. So this is the meshing meshing part of it. So it's a motor mesh, it's just uh, like this. We assign how what's the size of the mesh. Right? And then we assign material. So we have a material bank. Okay? So we can choose what we want to assign. Okay. So what I would do is I will use bus Novelin 110H as my material. So, do you know how many material we have in this database? And do you know how important it is a material database to our uh, design engineer for plastic design? Actually, there is 5,000 material inside the bank. And it's quite complete from big to small uh, vendors, different kind of plastic. 77 family of plastic. So inside the material, we have viscosity, suggested melt temperature, suggested eject, ejection temperature, glass transition temperature, uh, temp, uh, thermal conductivity, everything needed to conduct a uh, plastic simulation. Right. So after choosing your material, we'll choose the gate, gate location. So we'll choose somewhere around here in the middle so that the flow could uh, go more balanced, I suppose. So anyway, you just locate here.
So after locating, the next thing we will do is run. All right. A first P mirror design will only take a few steps. That is mesh, material, and gate. Of course, after that we can put in more and more control, including the operation control, the flow settings, the packing settings, everything. But the first time, we just see whether uh, our thickness is appropriate or not in the desired stage. So we can just run, right? It will take a few minutes. So I have pre-run the result over here. Right, so this is how it feels. This setting, it took like two seconds to fill, to fill in all the things. And this is the other result we have. The pressure, temperature, shear stress, they will affect our painting capability, cooling time, sigma. This is what our topic today. Right? So this is the sigma we have. So we can see uh, as usual it comes out at the place near the rig. Right. So one, two, three, four, five. We have five ribs, uh, but since I'm setting the value a little bit different, so they have different value also. The highest point is 0 0.05. Okay, these two ribs are quite severe. Uh, at this value, they will be touchable. They will be sensible. They will, they are visible, but not very nice to a uh, surface appearance. So we come deep to investigate. What is the reason that there is a difference in sigma? And what is the appropriate uh, value, the fitness value for rib and fillets? Okay, let's have a look. Right? So, coming back to the model, um, we can see that at the bottom, the two different size of rib is observed. Rib and fillets radius. Rib 1 and rib 2. Rib 2 are bigger. Okay. So, if you follow the design handbook, uh, they will have uh, three basic rules regarding avoiding the same marks. First is the rib thickness has to be between half and two thirds of the overall thickness. The fillet has to be 25% to 75%. And the draft angle uh, is normally 1 to 1.5 degree. So if we come back and see, rib 1 and rib 2 have different thickness and different fillet radius. The first one is 1.35 which is 53%. It's inside the, I mean, the design thumb, rules of thumb, safety zone. The fill radius is also safety zone, 25% to 75 This is 27%. For rib 2, it is just a little bit over, right? Both of them, 2 thirds is 66%, is 11% over, and 79% is 4% over. So it come out as a result there is a difference of uh, more than 11%, right? 50 and uh, 0 0.35. The difference is more than the thickness difference. So we can see that their relationship is actually not linear. It's a 3D um, scenario because they are shrinking in all three directions, X, Y, Z. And it depends on the material. So this, we just decide a little bit over, over fit than the design and the rule, but the outcome can be much more different. So let's see. What else can we do if we are not 
only satisfy with the terms of rule? What kind of factors is affecting the value of the sigma? Right? Apart from the thickness and fillet radius, thickness and fillet radius are more to a solution to the problem, but might not be the cause of the problem. Right? Apart from adjusting the thickness, we have the other ways as well. Okay? First of all, let's just see what is the Uh, factors for this uh, sink mass. Okay, the first one is cavity pressure. Right. In the packing stage, if you could, if you could pack more pressure, pack more plastic inside to increase the density. Right. Of course, we have a more uh, better status and less sink mass value. More packing. Uh, material. In here, we can see there's a chart in which we can test out different packing pressure or packing flow rate to control the density of the plastic to minimize the sigma. Okay. Next thing is the flow rate. Okay. How fast the plastic flow into the cavity would also affect the sink mark value. Okay. Cooling time. How a faster cooling time can have a lower temperature gradient, therefore a lower sink mark. Okay, especially on the fake part. But this is also controversial because uh, if we make the cooling faster, which means that we have a lower packing time. They have little uh, packing value, so this it depends on material. So different material controlling the cooling rate might have good result, but might have bad result too. Okay, plastic melt temperature. Okay, do you think is increasing melt temperature or decreasing melt temperature with effect? Right, we could test it out. We can try out increasing the temperature and decrease the temperature and see what's the difference of the sigma. Raw material, of course this is quite important and the result can be very uh, distinctive. For example, if we put uh, some normal polymers and compare with fiber reinforced plastic, on the sense that I could say in, in engineering sense, fiber, fiber reinforced uh, materials could have less sigma. Okay. But if we want to quantify, I mean in terms of cost, real cost, do I need to get to fiberglass or I just use back the normal resin, it will give me an acceptable sigma value. We have to test it out. So what we actually do is Apart from thickness, in this, a lot, a lot, major five uh, reasons, five root cause to cause the sigma. We could test it out. Do we have a chance to test it out uh, in real prototype? Probably there is uh, because of cost constraint and time constraint. We won't have too much choice to test it out, but we can try it out inside uh, simulation too. Okay. So let's have a look. Another example uh, to see how the thickness change would affect the sigma value. So this is another typical sigma caused by the rib. Right? The original rib is two millimeter and two millimeter radius in fillet or so. So what actually we do in soluble plastic is that because it is integrated with CAT platform it would be a good good workflow to create different configuration of different side of things. Therefore, we can adjust it very quick and compare the result. So on this sense, I, I can calculate um, the minimum, maximum sigma I found on the rib is 0 0.015 millimeter. And then I compare the other one, I run again, 
it's one millimeter and 0 0.8 millimeter right so i am facing a dilemma one is a thicker rib thicker fillet better mechanical performance however the other one have a lower sink mark so which should i choose okay we can see that if we are able to obtain sink mark value as we can see here two millimeter is okay uh, the sigma is 0 0.015 although it is out of the general rule but because of the shape factor and the material we use we could actually use back this thick rib without sacrificing i mean the mechanical property okay it's up to us to judge as long as we get the value we can find out so in this case probably we will not need to change to the uh, smaller spin mark value by reducing almost half of the thickness for half of the sigma. So this can help us to make better judging in our engineering uh, practice, engineering analysis, especially in the early design stage. Okay. So what actually we do using this tool, the objective is actually predict the defect as early design stage so that we could not use too many costs on the mold reworks right and then we find out the value of different factors how these factors will impact the performance of the part will a changing this factor creating more defects or the weather way around right and then lastly the time and burden for user could be greatly reduced as analysis as for example in this case study in i show you just now would take around three to five minutes to solve using a normal workstation and you if speaking of multi-cavity include runner cooling line everything and do all the rubbish analysis uh, other defects analysis it will take probably a few hours to go through compared to finalizing a design outsource to uh, move makers getting feedbacks and then find out what's the error and then go through the prototyping process again which may take weeks this approach can really save time and burden of plastic design engineers Okay, so this is a summary of today's presentation. Before we uh, go say bye-bye, any questions uh, you would like to know more about this plastic, please let me know. So, uh, if you don't have any question or you have a long question, you can always email to me or call to me. So, in our simulation event and activities, we organize a few programs for you to take a chance to familiarize with different simulation tools, including plastic design. So, we will have occasionally we will have simulation workshop where we share about the design simulation stress and strain or plastic simulation or flow simulation and some industrial cases and also this webinar which uh, you are hearing right now it will be organized every thursday for simulation one most probably is once per month so catch up with our marketing invitation letter and on may late may we'll have a dvd day. this time we'll invite some industrial speakers to talk about the application of FEA. So, and lastly, we have Innovation Day and Technical Day. So, 
So keep your eyes on our invasion letter and hope to see you next again on our uh, simulation program. So thank you very much for joining this webinar. If you wish to know more information on soluble plastic or in the way of designing plastic simulation and how to run the analysis, you can always email to this address and this call this number. So, see you next time around. Bye-bye.